What is good? We're back. And we got a tripod, a new tripod for you. We got Big Co's back on the one and twos. We got Big D uh, over here and, and just Casey. It's no big you don't have little, mm. little case. <laughs> <laughs> little case over here on too the many, mic. Too many bigs. Medium case. We got it. Moving forward. Ready to roll. Fresh All crack. Right. Fresh Love crack. It. Here we go. Today we got elite must buys. So these are high end guys you know that julia roberts you know gotta get the you know Mm -hmm. you're paying because you know they're they got a clean bill of health you know what i'm saying worth every penny that's right that's (laughs) worth every penny (laughs) that's right Uh, julia roberts used to be an actress for you young bucks (laughs) that's that's a pretty woman go go check that out right and the other part of that conversation is confidence is key if you know she's healthy it uh makes it so much better it is all right be sure you like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. Off the rip. There's the first one. There we go. Back at you. These are going to be high-end guys that, that we feel are slipping down in ADPs, and I've been seeing in drafts right now uh, just slowly declining, and I feel like all off-season long we might have been hit, mentioning some of these names, but you know, the first one is Justin Herbert. In some drafts, yes, he still stays in the first round, but I've done three or four mocks in a row now where he has been consistently in the second round. You know, I was already buying him when he was slipping to nine and ten. And now if there's any, you know, what we're doing here is I know every league won't have a buy window for these guys. Some people will be holding on to those guys for dear life. Somebody's a Chargers fan. Somebody's an Oregon fan. Somebody's, you know, whatever it may be. Somebody just has, you know, a lot of gumption and has actually watched football and knows that I shouldn't be selling Justin Herbert and isn't listening to a bunch of silliness here. Sure. But Justin Herbert, I think right now is one of the biggest buys. If, if there is any loose grip on him of all of fantasy football, and, and we're talking super flex tight end premium when we're talking mm-hmm. in a lot of these scenarios, of course, if it's one quarterback, you know, I'm not all that interested in buying, you know, quarterbacks unless they're just, you know, guys like Anthony Richardson and, and game breakers, I would still buy Herbert in a one quarterback, Josh Allen, you know, good. If you can get Josh Allen, he can make a big difference on your one quarterback team. Absolutely. Uh, but we're talking two quarterbacks here. I think everybody is just under the assumption that, you know, Herbert hasn't lived up to the billing of, of where he should be necessarily. Like, Dude, the scenario has been so bad for Justin Herbert and, and what he's been in. The coach had no business being the coach. And now we, we, we are now going into a scenario where the coach has every business being the coach. The coach acts with deliberateness. He knows exactly what he's doing. He gets the most out of all of his guys. He's been at a championship level at the college platform and at the professional platform. And then he brings in Greg Roman, who he's very familiar with. And we know that he, he's been in situations with Colin Kaepernick and, and Lamar Jackson. Um, and if you think that, that he's going to run the same offense and, the, and run the same plays and do the same stuff, all across the board that he was doing with those guys, you're out of your mind. True. Uh, I just, I yeah, just, but, uh, Justin Herbert dude's only going to throw it six times a game. That's absolutely not going to happen. <laughs> um, you know, and we can go to the, you know, I, is it going to be there right away? No, but we can go to the San Fran model where they're going to be efficient in what they do and how they do it. Oh, they're gonna, highly. They're going to be very like, just go look at JJ McCarthy last year. Right. I'm not going to say it's there because that's a, that's a bad comparison for me because they didn't throw it as much. They're not going to be able to do what they did in college and be so dominant because they built their trenches up so well. Right. They're not going to not throw in the second half. Right. Yeah. They're going to have to. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, even if it's 23 times a game, I'm fine with that. Those are going to be 23 high points per pass passes coming out of Justin Herbert's hand. And he is every bit as athletic as Josh Allen is, if not more. And we've kind of stopped seeing a little bit of that. I bet we see a little bit more of Herbert. We can protect him. Now, yes, you could say, hey, the pieces around him as far as the wide receiver core has been greatly diminished. And hey, look at all the stuff he had. And it's like, that's fine. Harbaugh has always operated in a really good space with not the most high end of of prospects. Lad's going to come out there, be good. And and you know, the other guys on that roster are so cheap to buy right now. The the Palmers, the Quinton Johnston, the DJ Charks. And I guarantee you one of those guys is going to have an awesome year this year. Especially with Justin compared Herbert. to cost. 
Right. A, a ridiculously good breakout compared to cost. Before I get on all the good stuff, I, I'm not saying he's not as athletic as Josh Allen, but the rushing touchdowns of Josh Allen just kind of takes that to a whole other right. stratosphere. Well, he, just, he was doing some of that, and then he has, he has since stopped with a bunch of injuries. Sure. But uh, he yeah, has yeah. the ability to do that is His, more what I'm saying. Well, he, you know. Three touchdowns, three touchdowns, five rushing touchdowns. Josh Allen just ran for 15. So it's not – but but he can run. He was the number two quarterback in fantasy points scored his second year in the league. And that's, you know – and the year before – the year after that, which was the year before last year, he was a top, he was a number 11. So the Chargers were pacing down, and they changed the offensive coordinators. And, you know, they've gone through the hiccups. Obviously, Herbert broke his finger and, and didn't play all the games last year. But it was not even close. You know, he he just dropped off across the board. Chargers cleaned house, brings in everything you just said, the system, the coach, legendary coach. He's going to get the most out of everybody. Dude's a proven winner. When that rising tide lifts all those boats, Herbert's going up with it. These cheap wide receivers are going up with it. Are all of them going to pay off versus cost? Maybe not, but there two or three of them are going to be way better than cost and you know lad's probably going to be a stud but quentin johnson could pay off palmer could pay off for one of them's definitely paying off for cost they're 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 too cheap it's basically just you know uh, not quite the same because he's not a rookie and herbert's had success in the past and he was you know probably qb one or two in dynasty back after the 2021 season when he finished second but like you know the texans were left for dead last year mostly by me (laughs) but you know so they had stroud come in and then you know the new regime and you know they just took off well same thing can happen to the chargers here they're just not starting with a rookie quarterback they're starting with a guy who's done it handful of times already so i love the elite dynasty buy of herbert and you know like you said every every room that's that's a given man where every room is different every league is different every group of 12 managers is different and so he's the value of his uh, sleeperness, if you will, is going to be different in every league. Our ADP, which is a, a due for an update, so it's a month old, has him at the one nine, which is where he fell to early in the off season, and now he's felt fall. You know, Casey's got him here in the middle of the second round of a dynasty startup. Um, it's crazy, and I, I was in a startup recently where we took Caleb Williams over Herbert. And it's just like Caleb Williams hadn't done anything yet. He's just young and shiny and fun. Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, and these all these ADPs and stuff, they're coming from all different directions. We kind of make fun of cheap leagues. This was a cheap league. I got into it with a, a friend, um, our buddy Colt. It's a $20 league, I believe. And it's just like, well, the only reason I'm in is because Colt's my buddy and it was fun to be on the clock. Like sure. we, I didn't, we didn't send any trades. It was just basically we treated it like a mock and it's a dynasty startup. We drafted our team. Herbert slipped, you know, and so in a it's it's just no matter what type of league you're in, it the slippage on Herbert is real, and it, whether you're in a a league already that's existing and you can go out and buy him, or you're in a dynasty start, or, you know, a, t- a two a two quarterback super flex startup right now, even in a one quarterback, he's gonna be way down there. We did mm-hmm. that one quarterback mock two weeks ago without you, and I thought Jordan Love was great value in the seventh round, and because I was talking through the mock in every pick, Jay Wayne was like. Well, you know, Joe Burrow is still on the board. Yeah. Uh, you know, Justin Herbert's still on the board. And, and I'd, I'd have to go back and look, but he probably was eighth, ninth, tenth round in yep. one quarterback, you know. So it doesn't have to just be super flex for this to matter to you. It, uh, Justin Herbert is just slipping uh, on all accounts, slipping across the board, and his fantasy point scored is about to restore. And there's no reason not to try to take advantage of that. Yeah. Big D, any thoughts on Herbert before we move to the next guy here? No, I mean, you can't hold the fact that he went to Oregon against him. I mean, but um, <laughs> there you go. I, I think you said it. Uh, you, you guys kind of laid it out perfectly. I think that if you're worried about volume, I think the, the thing that you pointed out was that Herbert's going to have better quality throws than he has in the past year. And I know that there's all kinds of question marks at the wide receiver, but I, I believe that Greg Roman, um, he likes to run, but he's not against passing either. I know that I, I made the joke about six passes a game. He's going to be passing a lot more than that. And not only that, if the focus is on the run game, that's going to open up the passing game, you know, um, football 101. And I, I think that Herbert is definitely in that, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he ended at quarterback eight overall next year, um, yeah. just points, you know, point points per game type of, type of value because he's going to be able to hit – 
um, some touchdown stuff and checkdowns. And even though they're running, there's going to be some scheme differentials. And and I, I don't know if that offensive line is going to allow them to run as much as everyone thinks they're going to. So I, I, I agree with you that uh, Herbert's also going to be put in positions where he's going to have to throw the ball and he could do it. So I, I'm, I'm a firm believer now that he's healthy, he's got a better taste in his mouth with the, the new coaching staff. He's a, he's an elite buy as we say. Yeah. Last little thing. It is dynasty. He, he, they just picked up a first round receiver in Lad McConkey, and they could easily sign a uh, T Higgins next year in free agency, you know, like this, he doesn't have like a roster roster full of all-stars right now. Neither did Patrick Mahomes last year. And they just brought in Hollywood Brown, and Xavier Worthy, they're not playing no games this year. Like they're resetting yep. everything. And they, you can't bring in everybody in one off season. Right. Right. You bring in Lad McConkey, you give Quentin Johnson a chance. Palmer's been an underrated wide receiver for the first couple of years. Anyway, he 100%. Palmer's a really, really, really good wide receiver three. Right. And Chark's not bad have, for those big plays. Yeah, no um, doubt. Chark's, and, and Chark's in Chark, there as well. Chark can make a big play. He's going to make a big play right when you don't want him to if you're betting against him. Um, <laughs> he killed me yep. last year. Uh, so, you know, it's just one of those, like, there's, they're right now, and it may not be like the super explosion of points week one for from the quarterback here, but in Dynasty, this reset is happening, and they – First round pick, boom, straight to the offensive line. Doing what they're going to do, right? They could have taken neighbors, right? They didn't, but they they could next year, or they could bring in a massive free agency, you know, free agent right. acquisition. Like this, they're not going to just roll in the next three years with the cast of characters they have right in a second. Right, and that's the window to buy. Well, this is how you this is how you do it. This is how you build it. For if you're if you're L A. and and you're Harbaugh, and he said in the press conference afterward, we did draft a weapon. It's our off. It's this offensive line we we just drafted, and that just tells like that's why Michigan was able to do what Michigan was able to do because Michigan just focused on the offensive and defensive line, and they could they could have nine rotational players, and their offensive line was just a brick shit house. Good luck getting to their guy, mm-hmm. and they're gonna f- impose their will on you. And that's you got to start somewhere, and I think that's well put that you can't put all the pieces together at once. And this is how this works in Dynasty when you know you have an elite asset and the things are dipping down by the dip because it isn't going to stay there for long and then everybody's going to be back in and Herbert's going to be one of the best six quarterbacks again yep. in two years. Well, uh, there's a bunch of quarterbacks now, even if he's top, even if he's the best six, seven, eight, nine, like you, you can buy him and not pay that price for him right. right this second. Right. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 rookie draft kit complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. All right, so moving on, the next elite dynasty must buy is AJ Brown. Boom. But once again, a lot of this episode is going to be predicated on what I've been seeing, and what I've been seeing is consistently in five mocks in a row now and you say whatever you want about mocks but we got good people in these mocks sure and and in these rooms and there's you know at least nine out of the 12 if not 12 of the 12 guys are are doing their best to draft a real good team here um and aj brown has been going in the third round over and over and over again super flex tight end premium of course this is a 26 going on 27 year old receiver who is at one point last year, somebody who we were talking about scoring points among the lines of CeeDee Lamb and Justin Jefferson and Tyree Kill and putting him up there potentially in that tier because he was so damn good. He had 100 yards, multiple games. You yeah, know, he broke uh, Calvin Johnson's record. He, he An absolute just problem to deal with. And then the wheels fell off of that thing and we got a little stink on him, right? He... He was going from the turn on the first round Mm -hmm. to now the turn in the third, you know, mid third, three, four. It's ridiculous that you can get that big of a difference making player at that point. So that tells me there's probably people out there that the buy window is open a little bit on A.J. Brown because the wheels fell off for the Eagles. Things got super stinky over there after the Niners, uh, you know, broke their back. Yeah, Um, the Niners beat him up. They caught him at the right time. You know, and then AJ Brown had the extra stink on him because he was acting like a you know, a little a little ba, a little bitch ass sometimes. You know, he was acting like a wide receiver, right? Yep, sure, good way to put it. Um, 
And, you know, for whatever reason, we don't know what was going on in that locker room. We have no idea. But he, he those guys in those situations feel like they should be getting the ball more because they can make a big difference. And, and it wasn't going the way that things needed to go for A.J. Brown. But we saw for game after game after game for A.J. Brown for the last two years how good this man can be. Uh, and he's not even old. Like, he's not even in that, like, oh, my God, this guy's so old. Like I said, I'm pretty sure he's still 26 years old right now. He's 26 as we speak. And, and I'll, I'll, fi I'll figure out the, the birthday. But just one more thing before I kick it to Big D or, or Big Co here is, you know, we we take for granted sometimes these good organizations losing coordinators because that's how this cycle goes. And, and that that's what happened with the Eagles last year. They lost both of their coordinators, and it looks like they've gone on to be successful in their next at least year one be some everybody's interested in what the Cardinals are doing and everybody's interested in what Shane Steichen and the, and the Indianapolis Colts are doing. That was their offensive and defensive coordinator, right? You lose those guys and everything was fine for a little bit for the Eagles. And then all of a sudden when they hit a little adversity, they were switch coordinators trying to figure it out. So they've got a whole new crop in there. And Vic Fangio is a good defensive coordinator, regardless of what you think about and how Miami thought about him. Like, if everyone buys into what Vic's doing and he has the right personnel, he's had a long track record of being very, very solid. Oh, yeah. And Kellen Moore, I think, can call an offense. We've just talked about Justin Herbert and how big of a mess that was. You know, Staley, I don't think, was ready to be a head coach. He's a coordinator face. Sure. Um, that, that was... that. that was, so was Fangio. You know, Fangio got the sure. head coach. He was a Broncos. Sure. He's coach. too old to he's get a the head coach. Quarter. You know, yeah, for you sure. You've got to put a limit on the head, just just like we should with the president. you got to put a limit on, you know, the how old you are coach. when you're a head yeah. coach. At least first, at least you're starting off, you know, if you've been a head coach before, maybe you kind of know what it is going into it, but your first time, you know, you might need a... He was so good for so long. They had to give it to him. Right. So let me jump in real quick, AJ. Um, Big D for AJ Brown before I lose what he Casey got me on three things here. He he got the extension. He just got eighty four million guaranteed. He's twenty six years old today. The con he's maybe he's been about to be twenty seven, but he's not about to turn twenty eight in season this year, right? He's twenty six, right? The second he just got eighty four million guaranteed. The Eagles offense did go down here. Like it it looks so bad at the end of the year. And when Casey and I were looking at the reason this guy's on this list right now is because Casey and I were talking about trading for him in a league and. As it was looking so bad for the Eagles down the stretch, week 13 is when they got crushed by the Niners. A.J. Brown had 19 and a half points that week. Big D, I know you were busy watching the Seahawks, but he had 19 and a half points. Oh. 16 point, <laughs> 16 point 16.4 next week at Seattle. Seattle contains him. There you go, Big D, with 10 and a half. 14 in week 16, 9 in week 17. In the last game of the season, it didn't matter, minus a point. I don't know what happened. He got one target for one yard, and I guess he fumbled it. As bad as it looked, and the Eagles offense, that kind of goes together with the last thing I want to talk about. Hertz, was, Hertz had a hurt knee, and Hertz is maybe, I mean, he's, he's thick, so you can't call him pound for pound one of the toughest guys in the league because he's huge. But, like, he was out there gutting it out. But you could tell, like, as soon as he had that knee hurt, mm. the, the problem with the Eagles offense – from a defensive perspective going against him is Hertz could run and get a first down anytime he wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's what had everybody playing. Obviously AJ Brown and, and Devonta Smith are stud wide receivers and you got Dallas Goddard and you know, now you're bringing in Barkley, you know, now you got Barkley to throw in there. But like the key to the offense is the fact that Hertz is huge and he could run fast enough and strong enough to pick up a first down anytime any third down he could get it if he wanted it break a defense's back and then they had all these offensive weapons so like as soon as Hertz couldn't run and get that first down and it seemed like I don't know if it affected the way he was throwing or affected his confidence and then everything you know things start to snowball as bad as it looked I expected this game log to be worse Big D this man had 16, 10, and 14 and, and 9 going into go to week 17 like that's he didn't even kill you like I, yeah, I just, sure. you know, like it just, there was the stink for the Eagles, the way they ended this season was so bad. When I looked at this game log, I expected to see, I, I expected to see it taper down to like five, four, three, two, the last couple of weeks, just the way it felt. And yep. AJ Brown, cause I don't have any, I don't have him on any of my teams and that doesn't feel good when he's last year, right? Break six games in a row over 125 yards rushing, breaking my boy, Calvin Johnson's record. Not fun to not have any AJ Brown, but he was still good and you know he, he he wasn't gone and those like 90 percent snap share all the way up until week 18 94 5 95 percent snap share he's on the field out there the whole yeah. time so i'm gonna throw it to you about and and, and you're gonna you know bring an extra layer of spice here but like 26 years old 84 million dollar extension uh, unguardable because 27 he, you know june 3rd 30th 
Right. So he's not. He, so next year at this time, he's still, still going to be 27. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to throw it to you, Big D. The un, one of the most unguardable wide receivers because of his physical. He's basically this this generation's Des Bryant. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, I think that's a good, good way to say it and a good transition. I mean, this offense is going to look different. You know, Jason Kelsey's retiring. We don't know what the tush push is going to look like. Everybody's, yeah. you know, talking about these touchdowns and I think there's going to be some touchdown regression in the regression in the, in the negative, right. For, for Hertz in, in, in the sense of rushing, the uh, rushing the ball and, um, and you add Barkley in there and well, okay, well, why am I saying all this? Well, the whole point of me talking about this is you add some quality in that run game. And, and again, it's going to improve the pass, uh, pass reception. You're not going to be able to just double team AJ Brown. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to be able to do some of the schemes that you were able to do on the, on the Eagles late in the season. Oh, and then remember last year at this time, how hyped uh, we were about the chargers because Kellen Moore went over there. Right. So Kellen Moore's coming in. He's got a little stink, but we just got done talking about Herbert and how much there was a struggle there last year with injuries and the way that that uh, the head coach was, you know, I, I don't know. He was just choking. Like if you're making a fire, he was choking the the air out of, out of it. It seemed like everybody was struggling 100%. there. And I, I'm a big believer in Kellen Moore. I know that he he struggled over there at the Chargers, but we saw him un, unlock and and uh, and get Dak and, and CD Lamb on the right page there in Dallas. Him coming over to the Eagles now with all the weapons that are adding up with the changes on the offensive line. I think they're going to have to rely on the pass a little bit more, even with Saquon there. And I think all those things that all you gentlemen just said early on, um, you add that up with the changes of offensive coordinator, the changes of offensive line, and the new talent that's around. I think AJ Brown is, is due for those big games again, where you know people don't realize is that. He's a little streaky. He's not um, St. Brown in the sense of like St. Brown ceiling isn't as high as A.J. Brown. Maybe this year it will be. Who knows? But but last year, you know, St. Brown was just extremely consistent where A.J. Brown could get you 40, 50 points mm -hmm. um, and just blow up a week for you. And I think that that's coming back again. The last game of the season, last game of the season, but but his his snap percentage was up. Everything was up. It was just a um, a little bit of choke there on on the on the offensive side. The last six games, so it's wheels up for AJ Brown, which means it should be wheels up for you going out and buying him. I like it. Yeah, you gotta gotta go get gotta go get AJ Brown, and uh, I think this whole Eagles offense goes goes back closer to what we expect and what we've seen from them in the past to what we remember from the end of last season. All right, the third uh, must elite must buy comes this one's comes down to i think a little bit of an injury because if there wasn't an injury i think people would be clamoring potentially for him to be in the maybe even tight end one spot and it's tj hawkinson here for one of our other buys here and we are always talking tight end premium even if you aren't tight end premium he's still a buy uh, more so in the premium game uh, but this is this guy was number one in every single category that you can point to basically and if he wouldn't have got hurt would have just been gangbusters of just smashing shit all uh, all season long and now obviously you're coming in here with a little bit of an unknown right unknown from health per point from Hawkinson and an unknown of quarterback play right I'm very comfortable with TJ Hawkinson I'm very comfortable with Kevin O'Connell and and that's kind of where where I where I go from there uh this is a they traded for Hawkinson and then paid him he's not going anywhere him and Justin Jefferson are the cogs that run this offense I don't know that we can necessarily come out here and say we can expect JJ or Sam Darnold to have an understanding of how to use TJ Hawkinson like a, guy, a veteran like Kirk Cousins does. Sure. At the same time, they got to throw it to somebody, and and he's he's as good as anyone in the business of knowing where to be, knowing how to sit, uh, and helping his quarterback out. So I think the injury value on TJ Hawkinson, who currently we're seeing 511 six round and tight end premium is there's such a nice little injury dip here that you know he certainly could come back and not be right all 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 year long but at this point with knees tight ends it's not a position that i worry about and they're the longest lasting of pretty much any position out there yeah i think tj hawkinson is a massive buy and, and he is he's if he was on your team you were you were winning games because of tj hawkinson last year no doubt Big D, any thoughts on TJ? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, kind of what you laid out. It's going to be a slow start, most likely, in the beginning. But he's he's one of those elites. I know that he's getting overshadowed by 
Laporta and he's getting overshadowed by, you know, um, Brock coming out and okay. you know, we're, we're excited young, about Pitts again and we're excited about Kincaid, but you know, th- this dude's been doing it for a while. He was doing it in Detroit and they weren't quite using them like they did in, 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 um, in Minnesota. And, and you're right. I mean, Kirk definitely knows how to use that tight end, but I would say that that offense also knows how to use that tight end. Right. And, and one of the best friends for a rookie quarterback or a quarterback that's getting their footing like Darnold is the tight end position. So I, I, I expect, you know, great targets for, for Hawk. He's, he's, you know, in a tight end premium, you're looking for volume. And I still think he's going to get that volume opportunity, those eight, nine, 10 target a game. Um, he has a decent cash percentage. So he's going to be up there in those top five tight ends once he's healthy and and, and loaded, regardless of how, how they're struggling at quarterback or how the how the team is going. And if the quarterback's struggling, I think if the quarterback's struggling, it's going to be even more value for Hawk. Love it. Love it. So my man didn't play the last two and a half games, got injured halfway through week 16. He had 95 catches, y'all. <laughs> he had 95 catches. Didn't play two and a half games. Snap percentage wise, he may have, you know, got nicked up and left the game here the early week 10. He had 63%. So maybe he, you know, tweaked his ankle while he was catching 11 balls that week. You know, give he's him just a, tired. He just needed a break. He <laughs> yeah. needed to come to the sidelines while he put up that 134 yards in the touch and 35.9 tight end premium uh, fantasy points. Tight end premium or not, like, this man called 95. So even if, if you have no tight end premium, if you have a regular quarterback, even ready, regular tight end, if it's PPR, he caught 95 balls last year. Here's my favorite part. So Kirk Cousins get, because Casey and I have a team where we have talked TJ Hawkinson and we were looking at potentially trading him a couple nights ago and I had to get deep into this. And there's a reason why he's on this list right now. So Kirk Cousins got hurt in week eight because we were like, all right, well, Kirk Cousins got hurt. Um, uh, Justin Jefferson got hurt and Hawkinson got hurt. What do these game logs look like? Mesh all this together and 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 tell me the story, right? So, uh, Kirk Cousins gets hurt in week eight, and the wildest quarterback carousel you can imagine happened in that week eight that he got hurt. Six catches, twenty three and a half fantasy points. Seven catches the next week from maybe Josh Dobbs, maybe Nick Mullen. Maybe and I, I'm not exactly sure. I didn't check the the game logs of which quarterback was happening. I just knew it wasn't Kirk Cousins. Eleven catches in Week Ten. That's what I was just talking about. The 63 percent snap camp. Game. He had eleven catches for 134 yards. Kirk Cousins not there. Four catches for 50 yards. Five catches for 50 yards and a touchdown. The next week a bye week. So I mean, Kirk Cousins goes down 35 points, 11 points, 18 and a half points, 12 and a half points, 15 and a half points, 11 points. That's in a game where he played half, 44 snap percent. So in half, the first half of the game before he got hurt, he was on the pace to do another eight for 100, but he only got four for 50, 60 because his knee fell apart. He crushed without Kirk Cousins. This is tight end one potential right here with Nick Mullins and Josh Dobbs and that other dude that they let play for a minute. Jerron Hall, maybe? Hall, and then some Jared somebody? I, I don't know. They, well, wasn't, I, wasn't it somebody who won a raffle? In the, in yeah, the dude. Yeah, so 50-50. Like, yeah, yeah, 50-50, I get to play a couple snaps and we have a charity over here. Yeah. Like, uh, So, like, Hawkinson has been coming into this year, coming into the year that he just crushed, and he was, you know, fourth-ranked, fourth PPR guy because he only played two, you know, missed two and a half games. And the year before that was where when he got traded in the halfway through the season, the Vikings just started peppering him with targets. He caught 886 for 906 touchdowns, giving him tight end two, you know. Yeah. So, and he was tight end five back in 2020. And tied in 15 in 2021 because he only played 12 games. So he must have got hurt doing something over there, probably crushing ankle, it. Ankle injury. You know? So, yeah, that's right. I remember when he got rolled up. So this dude's done he's done nothing but be an absolute stud mm-hmm. since he walked into the league. You had, you said a big D. Like, I'm sitting over here, Lions fan, watching this guy that we spent a first-round pick on be good when they threw him the ball but don't throw it to him enough. And he was doing decent things, but as soon as the Vikings picked him up, they were like, "Yeah, we got a plan." And Kevin O'Connell, whatever, um, you know, I thought I really thought because in season I'm I'm hyperactive into like picking games for a contest, and I'm not as knee deep into this stuff as I used to be in season. And I go back through and try to catch up, and I'm like, I just didn't expect it to be that much without Kirk Cousins. And when I, as soon as I broke into that, I was like, "Wow, I was impressed." And so he's quarterback proof. 
and and another part of that big d that i was trying started to and i got off on my tangents and how i do but like all right well with a backup quarterback with and without justin jefferson so justin jefferson comes back in the, like last four weeks of the season Justin Jefferson, his first week back, doesn't do a whole lot snap percentage-wise, but then he goes back to, boom, 95% for the last three or four games of the season. So he's in there for three games with Kurt, with TJ Hawkinson, and TJ Hawkinson and Justin Jefferson both crush targets and catches. So with a backup quarterback, with Justin Jefferson on the field, TJ Hawkinson still, you know, 15, 15 points a game. That's I mean, that's 12, 12 and a half, touchdown dependent, with no touchdowns in that stretch. So... Yeah. With a backup quarterback, no touchdowns, but still catching five balls, six balls, four balls. You know, it's just you can't. And that's, that four-ball game is, the again, he played half. So if he'd have caught, you know, six or seven balls and scored another 15 or 16 points, that's tight end two, tight end three type numbers with Justin Jefferson and a, on the field demanding his targets and a backup quarterback throwing him the ball. That's all I needed to see. We shut it down. We did not trade him. He was not on the – there was not – there was end of discussion. That's all I needed to see. Quarterback proof, TJ Hawkinson. Part of it is a system, but he's paid to be there. The coach isn't going anywhere. And I mean, maybe the coach doesn't go. Maybe the coach is out in two years if JJ McCarthy doesn't work out because he's supposed to be some quarterback whisperer, but he really has been ridiculously good, him and Kirk Cousins. And he yep. kept the team. When Kirk Cousins went downhill, like that was his chance. He was probably, Kirk Cousins was on his, could have been easily been the MVP. Kevin could have easily been the coach of the year. Things fell apart, but they didn't fall apart. Like he kept them on track. They were still winning some games and not looking terrible for the way other teams fall off when their starting quarterback gets hurt. And being three, four quarterbacks deep, you know, I think Kevin O'Connell got a lot of respect last year and yep. and it's well deserved. And he got my respect too. So um Hawkinson yep. is a huge elite buy for me. Yeah, we threw out a bunch of numbers, but I just want to highlight again what Casey said. He's 26 years old, guys. Like, yeah. this is a dynasty. Like, the dude is is already putting up some monster numbers. And, you know, he's nine, eight, eight or nine years younger than Kelsey. Yeah. Uh, you know, so so just, just keep it in mind. Sometimes we make this game a little bit harder than it needs to be. Uh, this dude's putting up numbers. His, his value's down. And he's 26 years old. Uh, go get him. Yeah, and I know we're not talking about what to trade these guys for on this particular show. We do a ton of that. So if you want to, I'm sure somebody already in the comments has said, well, why won't you tell us how much to buy these guys for? We do that a ton. We just didn't want to spend a whole lot of time of telling you what to buy these guys for at this particular juncture. If you want to become a Patreon member, come on over there. You, I'll, sh I'll, I'll, I'll craft you. You tell me who you want to go get and who's available and we'll craft up a deal. Done. Um, we could do that over there but we do plenty of that so don't don't get it twisted we we do give you values on these guys we're just not on this particular show love it um all right last one but not least and we saved it for last because i knew this was going to send some people um <laughs> kyron williams elite fantasy must buy i know some people aren't going to like it it's a running back that's why he's on the list uh, but we wanted to i didn't want to hammer i want to try to get one of each position um and he just seems you know going in the fifth round late fourth early fifth and, and probably even sliding more because of some injury and there's the rookie hype and everybody's excited about Blake and um, you know, McVay's talking about Blake and I, you know, it's just, this is one of those situations where he has fifth round draft capital, Kyron Williams, that is. Um, so people are, and, and people missed on him and they didn't like him. So they're anything to, to write the ship on how right they were about Kyron Williams sucking. Yeah weighs into this so much even though they don't want to admit it um mm -hmm. and dude kyron williams is putting up fucking christian mccaffrey numbers last year that ain't a fluke guys i promise like that ain't just you don't just come in there and put up those kind of numbers like you can come in there and get the volume and be really good or you can come in there and put up the volume and be pretty good he was fucking excellent love it like the 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 rams didn't operate the same when he wasn't there completely different team he goes out there, and yeah, right, he's a little hurt this year. I don't give a shit what Kyron does. He can be do nothing until August. That's fine. You went out and you got Blake Corm. I think Blake Corm's a very good player. If Blake Corm would have went anywhere else, he'd be a higher ranked player for me. I liked him a lot. He's a little old, um, but he and Kyron mesh pretty well together. They're kind of similar. They needed another guy if they lose Kyron Williams to be able to plug in and play, and they got one, or at least we think they got one. 
and, and to also take a little bit of opportunity off of, or a little bit of volume off of Kyron's plate to maybe potentially keep Kyron a little healthier throughout the season. But I, I just can't make any mistake about it that I just can't see Sean McVay, who is a very, very smart man and one of the most innovative guys on offense, saw what Kyron did and saw what Kyron was to that offense. And to think that all of a sudden you're just going to bring a rookie in and Kyron's going to be dead, I just think is a little crazy. And then on top of that, what makes, I think, this a big buy is that you can go get Blake Corum. It doesn't cost you a whole lot of money. And now you are okay. It doesn't really matter what happens in either one of those situations. I think Kyron's probably going to be the man for two more years and stays healthy and, and scores 21 damn points a game. And that, that's what he's probably going to do. And I know there is plenty of people out there. Every time I see a Kyron Williams discussion, it's I can't get anything for him. Mm -hmm. So there is a market to go trade for Kyron Williams to pay a little bit more than the other guy who wasn't willing to pay anything for him and still get him for very, very cheap for what he can do for you. So Big D, thoughts on Kyron? And, and we're, we got to keep this kind of brief because we, we need to get out of here. Yeah, I mean, the thoughts on Kyron is just look at his last three games in your playoffs. Uh, the, dude, the dude crushed um, against, against competition. By then, everybody knew he was going to run the ball, and they still couldn't stop him. So I, I just everything you said is is, is spot on. Um, I'm I'm not worried about, you know, we we spent all last off season talking about the backups for Travis Etienne, for the backups for Ken Walker. You know, these high, you know, Charbonnet came in. You know, all all these things. There's there's the reason why they went out and got a backup. You know, there is injury, and the way that they run the ball in the Rams is important to the offense, obviously, because when Williams was out, it wasn't there. But Williams is not just a, a run-of-the-mill dude. Like, he's he's not just a system guy. He's he's a great running back, and he's going to produce points. And if if he's healthy and Coram's healthy, uh, Williams is on the field. Yeah, I Love agree. that. Love that. So, uh, yeah, we got to keep this quick, but uh, the – one of the biggest parts, the combination of the ADP uh, being like four point something. It's 411, and I've been seeing him going mid-fifth in the last few. Right. So you got a second-year running back who just scored uh, Christian McCaffrey Jr., poor man's Christian McCaffrey-type points, and he's going in the late fourth round. That's the reason he's on this list. And then the combination of being able to draft a guy who – uh, to, to buy into that system. So we, uh, over on the Patreon, we just had a really long conversation with our, we just did running backs and it was like just an open forum. Hey, we're all three arguing different things about running backs. And we got into Kyron, we circled back a couple different times and we came up with his ADPs down. He, when you buy him, you're buying Sean McVay's system and you have the ability to go get a Blake Corum who carried a national championship team last year and scored 28 touchdowns, and now you can go by, by him relatively cheap. He'll, Blake Horn will mean more to you than any other team in the league when you have Kyron. So, on your, so sure. you can buy Kyron and back him up with Blake Corum and buy that system for those two players. And, yes, Corum can take a little bit of work away from Kyron, but Kyron was by far the second in points per game. He missed some games, but by far was absolutely crushing it last year. And so he missed – he got hurt in week six – and he missed a, from t week 10 was a bye week but when you want to say what did that what does it mean they missed like the offense wasn't the same because Casey said that last year when he came back and he was like the offense wasn't the same got hurt week 6 7 8 9 10 is a bye week and, and he comes back in week 11 so these guys are scoring like 25 points a game putting up 30 putting up high 20s all the way gets hurt they go to Dallas Dallas's defense was up and down they can be they were turnovers cut catching like touchdowns and stuff on you but they can only put up 20 against dallas they go to green bay green bay's defense was for the most part absolutely terrible they got a little better towards the end of the year but green bay defense was terrible they put up three points in green bay have the bye week coming back getting started with seattle he's doing his thing and then they go off on a tear they scored 37 points they scored 36 points they lose to the ravens in overtime if the if the if the rams would have beat the rams had the best team Basically, the best regular one of the best regular season teams in the league last year, the Ravens. The Rams were going toe to toe, 31, 31 points against the Ravens on the road, and Kyron Williams was a huge part Ravens. of that. In the like they just went toe to toe with the Ravens. That was a mad, that was a ridiculous game, and then twenty eight against the um, Washington, 
30, 26. I mean, they went out. They win four. They win seven of the last eight games when Kyron comes back, and they're scoring 30 points a game. 21 the last week against San Fran, and it really didn't matter to San Fran. They had already locked it up. So, but, you know, that's just what it means to the team. If the team's winning because you're with a player, when he makes that much of a difference, then he's, and he was like number one in snap share points per game. And he's on the field all the time. And opportunity is everything. And like Casey said, when you get the opportunity, you could be good, you could be really good, or you can be fantastic. And with his opportunity in that system and his skill set, he was fantastic. So you can't really ask for much more. If he was in the second round and I had to draft him or Puka, I'm not, it's not even close. Sure. I'm not taking him. If he was in the third round and I had to take him or, you know, somebody really, really more, you know, a wide receiver that's that much more valuable, maybe not even close. But when you get down to the end of the fourth round, fourth round and I can get maybe on that turn and I can get snap up him and Tank Dell at the same time and I don't have to make that decision, it's an easy, easy it's getting a much, much easier click. There ain't many guys who can give you 20 points a game and Kyron look like he was the part. So That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There's re- I mean, the, the top five running backs in Dynasty are completely almost untouchable. You got you to gotta really overpay, especially those top three, and they didn't outscore Kyron last year. Yeah. That's, that's the point. Is Kyron outscored everybody points per game except for Christian McCaffrey? And it's not like he played three games, okay, guys? If he played three right. games, you know, if he played he, – he missed four games, right? If he'd have missed 14 games, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Right. He missed four games. All the other games, the only person that scored more fantasy points in all those games is Christian McCaffrey. That's the conversation here in addition to the fact that you can get him at the end of the fourth and the early fifth. So, and if you can go to a, an existing league and buy him cheaper than that, good for you, and grab yourself a, some Blake Corum and you'd be good to go. Screen flip. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Oh, wow. Buzzer beater. All right, so we appreciate you guys. We got to get out of here. We've run too long. We're going to get in trouble. But this is what happens when you get the tripod back in effect. And we're going to be, this is the tripod you're going to be getting a lot. And and we very much appreciate you. Be sure to go over to the Patreon side of things and check out all that. You get three extra shows a month. Uh, We got ADP. uh, We got rookie mocks popping off all the time. Uh, We're going to have rankings here. We're we're doing plenty of discussions of those over on the Patreon side of things. So lots of stuff to go check out over there. We got a couple of fun partnerships kind of coming down the pike here, which, which I think will provide some more. Uh, fun stuff for the show and different things to look at Uh, so we really appreciate you guys and we'll catch you next time peace